What's happening, everybody? Trey here, joined as always by my dad, Sean, and today reactions to the classics. We got another top 10 list. This time, uh, we got a reaction to Thin Lizzy, a group yes. we have not covered on the channel we have not. yet. Lots of mentions over mm. the years, but never never tackled it. No, so uh, going through their top 10 songs, courtesy this list of one of our uh, patrons, Gerard, man. So, Gerard, shout out to you. Also, uh, happy birthday. In happy the time. birthday, Gerard, by the time this, this <laughs> goes up. Uh, and thank you for bringing this one to us. We much appreciate it. No, uh, definitely looking forward to diving in because I don't really know. Uh, I don't really know any Thin Lizzy besides uh, the the hit here in the the states. The the boys are back in yeah, town. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, looking forward to this. Uh, before we get into the quick facts and share a little bit about Thin Lizzy and get into the uh, songs, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That helps us out. And uh, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button as well. We upload every single day in a variety of genres. At least one top ten list a week. Is as well yep. so uh always always great fun here at the channel and uh be sure to follow us on facebook and and twitch for our streams as well as uh every friday night every wednesday right. afternoon on twitch man and uh if you want us to maybe do a top 10 list for you you can check out our patreon page shout out to the patrons who keep this channel running but uh, all that to say let's get into thin lizzy a little bit because i knew nothing about them and there's some uh, surprising things yeah i didn't know anything about them either i had a, had a really good time just researching this very interesting group First off, we'll, we'll talk about what Gerard said because he mm. gave us some stuff on, I think, almost every song. Yeah. Maybe every song. So I always like to know what the person who brought the top 10 was. So Gerard said, Then Lizzie are an Irish band fronted and spiritually owned by Phil Blinded. a black, working class, illegitimate in his parentheses, Irishman, mm -hmm. who grew from the poverty of Dublin 1950 streets to become one of the most loved Irish artists, joining the cultural pantheon of Irish gr greats, Yeats. Joyce, Wild, Van, Rory. Lizzie formed in 1969 in Dublin, disbanded in 83, and Phil ultimately mm. died from a lifestyle of excess and medical mm. complications at the age of 36 in 1986. In that time, Thin Lizzie recorded 13 studio albums, two solo albums, and what is widely regarded as the greatest live album ever recorded. Gerard, mm. you will have some pushback on that from Allman Brothers fans, but I actually came across this album as one of the best That's right, ever. Yeah. They combined hard rock, Irish, folk, funk, poetry into a truly unique blend mm. over the course of their career. Their most famous hit single, and what we were just talking about, <laughs> yeah. and the only song that most Americans have previously heard, The Boys Are Back in Town, is not included in this list. I'm gonna go ahead and give that away. Mm. This top 10 spans the width and breadth of Phil slash Lizzie's career. It's a great song, but imagine how great the band <laughs> is. It's such a big hit, doesn't make their top 10. Below is a, rep is a list that represents, in a snapshot, the career of a true genius. A man whose star did not shine long, but shone mm. brightly. We were all in the gutter, but some of us are looking <laughs> at the stars. Man, like that write-up, Gerard. Good, that was good a words, great write-up. I didn't really have much to add to it, just that all music critic John Dugan has written that, quote, as the band's creative force, Phil was a more insightful and intelligent writer than many of his ilk, preferring mm. slice of life, Working class dramas of love and hate influenced by Dylan Springsteen and virtually all of the Irish literary tradition. I included that because as a big fan of Dylan and Springsteen, yeah. that pulled me in. Trey, what are we going to start with? Well, we are going to start number 10 off with Out in the Fields single from 1980. Five. So a uh, little bit about this track. Uh, Gerard says it's a late solo collaboration with sometime Lizzie guitarist and virtuoso Gary Moore. This song came towards the end of Lynette's career and life, unfortunately. The song is nominally referring to the troubles in Northern Ireland, but really are applicable to anywhere with any trouble and conflict about people. Right. So um, the song is reminiscent of the sound of their band and is influenced by both artists' wide musical palettes. It performed well critically as well as commercially, peaking at number three on the Irish charts and five in the UK. The highest positions either of the two ever reached in their solo careers and the highest UK singles chart position in Phil's entire career, both with and without Thin Lizzy. Yeah, All so right. this is a solo offering, but you know, it, it has really Thin Lizzy on it. Single released in 85. And before we play this, just a little FYI, the uh, the music will not be on mm -hmm. YouTube due to copyright, but there's a link below. If you want to watch right. the entire thing, listen along with this, uh, you're more than welcome to do that by clicking that link. If you just want to know what we think about the songs, hang out right here because we'll be right back on YouTube with our reaction to Out in the Field. That's right. Lyrics will be pulled up on our respective computers, so let's get into it. All right, number 10, Out in the Field, starting us off real freaking strong, man. Um, I I really enjoyed this track lyrically and also, of course, instrumentally. Gary Moore, uh, uh, especially towards the end of the track, had that just killer 
solo. Yeah, I think it was, uh, you know, just an anthem, man. It was mm. a freaking 80s, mid-80s anthem that I grew up with. Not this song, but I mean, I grew up with, with music like this. I really enjoyed it. I thought it had some said some uh, great lines, you know, as they built out through the uh, through the course and as it progressed, you know, out in the fields, the fighting has begun, out on the streets are falling one by one, out from the skies, a thousand more will die each day, death mm. is just a heartbeat away, and then later on he talks about the flag won't stop the bullets. And... No, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, think, you know, what Gerard was talking about, some of that timelessness here in the lyrics, because, uh, you know, this can uh, apply to anybody, uh, you know, going through uh, a wartime situation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I can even apply it reading now as we sit here with the COVID. No, pandemic, you're right, man. You know, it's like, it's fu- ironically and unfortunately, a thousand people in America roughly die every day at the time we're recording. Well, so. even this, there's no communication, no one to take the blame, the cries of every nation, they're falling on deaf ears. Amen again. to that one, Man, brother. yeah, so that, that kind of fits really well with our time. And I can see this track, yeah, being in a nice mid-80s, uh, like, action movie. Movie yeah, is, uh, man. or you know, getting ready to, to fight or whatever the case may be. Um, I think it has a lot of uh, you know versatility and uh, how it could be used, man. So very uh, very strong performance to start us off. Really enjoyed uh, really enjoyed Phil's kind of vocal delivery too. too. Not knowing uh, not knowing you know obviously any any of his tracks really. So now we're gonna go to number nine. Uh, Rosalie, and uh, it originally is off of the 1975 record Fighting, but we're going to do the version off of the famous Live and Dangerous from 78. Yeah, and this is actually a Bob Seger mm. cover. Hey, we've done a top 10 of his as well, if you want to check that we out. We have, for sure. <laughs> Gerard said it's a song that encapsulates the live brilliance of Phil and Thin Lizzy. It was often said that they failed to capture on studio recordings their live brilliance, the mm. energy, charisma, infectious brilliance that they displayed on stage. This song perfectly captures what made them a band that is still so strongly loved so long after the sad demise of Phil. And, you know, that's the thing. The, the groups that are just great live groups, it is hard to bring that energy in the studio yeah. that they feed off from people. So uh, with that kind of a buildup from Gerard, looking forward to this one. All right, Rosalie coming in at number nine, uh, coming in live too, man. And I'm glad uh, Gerard chose a live version so we could get a get a taste of uh, what what that sounded like, man. I was man. gonna say you exactly mm. feel what he was talking about. This fantastic energy, the guitars, needless to say, are great. Phil brings great power in the voice, which you got to do mm-hmm. when your guitars are that good. I mean, you got to yeah. have a lead singer that can freaking bring it; otherwise, it's going to be overshadowed. No, it has that just great hard rocking, you know. Yeah, late, you could tell it's a seeker, but they made it their own. Late late seventies type of sound, and um, you know, man, I I, I enjoyed the, the little clapping section at the end. It. Kind of transports you to that time where you know you could envision yourself in the crowd, just going along, having a good time, listening to. Uh, a thin lizardy and um you know i wonder i i kind of like uh it almost like rosalie has the uh the power of uh what music gets played kind of pushing yeah, well, people well it out. says on the side over there in genius but you never know a guy's of genius is right i always like to to uh back that up and i didn't on this but it's intended as a tribute to rosalie trombley a former music director for mm. cklw in canada she was known for her knack at picking major commercial hits including the guess who's american woman mm. and elton john's benny and the, the jet. jet. So, uh, right. well, and you got the like. She got the plastic come from all the corners, corners of the world. So fantastic. She's everybody's favorite little record girl. Yeah. So. Can you imagine <laughs> if that is the case? And she had that kind of a pull. How many people were trying to suck up to her and get her to play their stuff? Because I back then, mm-hmm. radio people had so much more power, obviously, than they do in today's world. The way music is distributed, but. Uh, and- I, I like the honesty. Down on me, Rosalie. Shine on me, will you please? I mean, I know, uh, I, I know Seeger obviously wrote it, but uh, it, it seemed to kind of fit Thin Lizzy's uh, Maybe Phil and the boys are like, you know what? Let's cover Rosalie. Maybe we will dedicate it to her. Maybe she'll put us over a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, really, uh, again, really just a, a fun song, I, I think, is what I'd describe it as. Uh, and uh, now we're going to go to number eight, Sarah from uh, Black Rose, a rock legend in 1979. Uh, Gerard mentioned Light Dancing in the Moonlight. This is a song that only Thin Lizzy could record and release. For a hard-rocking, hard-living 70s band to release such a fluff song and retain their credibility, only Phil could get away with this. The song is about his daughter, Sarah. He wrote it immediately after the birth of her pop, fluff, and beautiful. A single went to 24 in the UK, 26 in Ireland. It's not connected to another Thin Lizzy song entitled Sarah, written for Phil's grandmother from their mm. second album, Shades of a Blue Orphanage, just an FYI, because it's odd to have two songs yeah. with the same name, but I, I'm guessing she's probably named after the grandmother. Uh, Moore completed all the guitar work with American Mark Nossif, 
playing mm-hmm. drums. Neither of the other members of Thin Lizzy, guitarist Scott Gorman or drummer Brian Downey, played on the song, implying that Sarah was originally intended for a Phil solo album. Mm. But, Trey, we have an appearance of an American musician. <laughs> the great Huey Lewis was featured playing the distinctive harmonica parts. Hey. <laughs> Lewis had been a member of Clover, a band that had supported Thin Lizzy on previous tours. Mm. More confirmed the song was mostly composed on an acoustic guitar, mostly by him, and that a drum machine was used and suggested the song only appeared on Black Rose because Phil was short, one sh- track short for the album. So they pulled this All in. Right. Ended up being a big hit. So uh, let's check out the softer side of Thin Lizzy. I'm in at number eight, my Sarah. And uh, you know, man, I, I already like this list, Gerard, because we're getting the, the different sides of, yeah. of Thin Lizzy here. And, uh, you know, we do have this softer pop side kind of. Yeah, just basically telling her, you know, when you came into my life, you changed my world, my Sarah, everything seems so right, my baby girl. You're all I want to know. You hold my mm. heart so don't want to go. You're all I need to live. My love to you, I'll give my Sarah. And then that just kind of like shows, I mean, having a daughter, I mean, my mm-hmm. daughter's almost 14, but man, I mean, yeah, there's just something. I mean, I love my son here to death, but there's something <laughs> about a little girl and a father that just melts his heart. So I, you, you get that softer side, yeah. Phil, man. Kudos, Steve. I like this one a lot because I could imagine, you know, yeah. if I was a talented songwriter, I would have, I would have uh, written this for my daughter. So what, what a fantastic well, thing. And hey, man, it's uh, quite applicable because I mean, Sierra, pretty common name, you know. So True. it could be, uh, could be sung to to many, uh, many a gals here, but and, uh, uh, much better than the Starship version of uh, <laughs> Sarah. Different song, but this is my favorite, Sarah. Hey, man, there you go. More uh, again, c- coming in with those unique uh, g- guitar tones at certain points. I was really impressed by him um, uh, as well. And uh, yeah, and, and yeah, man, just like uh, just like the lighter kind of uh, atmosphere here to but the still, track. Still, as you pointed out during a little unique, as you just said, you pointed out during the reaction in the. Uh, in the instrumentation, so even though yeah. it was a softer song, they still did some stuff that was pretty innovative. No, definitely, and uh, that'll take us now to number seven. We got Whiskey in the Jar. Gerard said the song that saved Thin Lizzy's career. They'd released two unsuccessful records that they were being close to being dropped from the label. Whiskey in the Jar is an old traditional Irish folk song that one day in rehearsal they just played for a bit of fun. When their manager heard them fooling around, he said that they had to record it. That's how you know you're good, man. Yeah, no joke. They were reluctant as they didn't want to be a covers band or be seen as a parody of an Irish band. Initially, it was intended to be a B-side of another song, but they were convinced to release it as an A-side in 73, and it reached the top 10 wow. in the UK, saved their career, and was a springboard to further success. Metallica actually recorded a cover of this wow. in the 90s, which brought it to a whole new younger audience. Now, if Metallica play a gig in Ireland and do not play the song, they are liable to get booed off stage or worse. Okay, and then Wizzy hit the Irish and British charts. Uh, in 1990, the Dubliners also re-recorded the song with the mm-hmm. Pogues. We have a top ten up That's right. with the Pogues with a faster, rocky version at number four in Ireland and 63 in the UK. And then as he talked about, uh, Metallica did it. Uh, and they won a Grammy for their mm. version in 2000 for Best Hard Rock <laughs> Performance. And in 2019, a guy that I really like, Canadian singer-songwriter Brian Adams, performed a cover of this song on the album Shine a Light. So this was only released as mm. a single so that's the kind of what what saved him out there whiskey in the jar i could man. never figure out it's right here in my old mind of who he sounds like <laughs> you know you mentioned during the reaction he has a little vocal treatment on i cannot it's right there golly <laughs> it'll, it'll happen once we stop it, recording it will, it, i just it's right there but anyway what a fantastic i just enjoyed everything Ooh. about i enjoyed the vocal performance i enjoyed the lyrics the guitar like that was a great song. No, I had to add that to the hearts. Man, uh, that's the a great songs, song. songs, man, because uh, I just love the storytelling there. Again, uh, you know, Moore's guitar work was just... Yeah, see, it says that he used a double lead guitar. Oh. I guess that's what caused such great greatness there. Yeah, and then uh, when you couple that with the uh, the vocal treatment um, for Phil, man, it just made for a very unique sound that, uh, you know, was a bit, a bit otherworldly at points. And I love the story, too. I mean, I know they didn't write the lyrics, but uh, it, it fit very well. Um, you know, essentially this guy uh, is going... It, steals uh, essentially yeah. from uh from captain farrell he got the money uh it was a pretty penny he took it home to his gal molly all right <laughs> um and uh, you know everybody's enjoying life there's whiskey in the jar so might as well uh hey man might as well get to drinking man um 
and uh, he knows he went into Molly's chamber. Uh, and then in walked who? Captain Farrell, who he stole the money for. He jumped up, fired off my pistols, and I shot him with both barrels. Make it count. Even even a, a little inebriated. Our, our guy here is a good shot. And unfortunately, though, he has that ball and chain on him, and now he's in prison. Um, so, you know, uh, a story that with a cool, like, cool little subplot all throughout. Yeah, I know. I thought um, it was great. So, man, this will probably end up on my favorites list. I would think it'd be hard to beat, but, but I don't uh, know. You never know. we still got six songs <laughs> left. We're going to go to Running Back from Jailbreak in 1976. Gerard said, a wonderful album track. Not a hit single like some of the other tracks on the album. The Boys Are Back in Town, Jailbreak, Emerald. But a crunchy, high-tempo mm. song. I think he's running back to Dublin, but it could be a girl, too. All right, and initially this song was chosen to be the single ahead of The Boys oh. Are Back in Town. The latter is seen as possibly being too aggressive for radio stations. That's a, kind of funny. But, it is. Uh, uh, Phil and the producer John uh, Alcock decided to employ session musicians to add more commercial elements to some of the tracks and try to produce a hit single. So Tim Hinckley was brought in to add keyboard parts okay. to Running Back. Robertson was against the idea as he liked the song as it had originally been arranged in a bluesier format with his own additions of piano and bottleneck guitar. I mean, I'd be like that too. Like, come on, man, don't yeah, be like, replacing. What's your problem? Yeah. Uh, he later said, quote, I took enormous offense to the changes. I couldn't understand why they'd pay this guy a fortune just for playing what he did. Listen to it and tell me it's not bollocks. <laughs> Robertson did not play on the finished version of the song, and Hinckley is not credited on the All album right. sleeve. Uh, Phil said at the time that Running Back was, quote, very much influenced by Van Morrison, another top ten that we've done on the channel. Exactly. And these are popping up left and right. I really like that song. So um, it's uh, short and sweet, only about three minutes. So let's see what we check it out. got in store here. All right, Running Back definitely had a lot of... Uh, early Van Morrison, I think, it influence did. I on agree. And I thought uh, Phil sounded like he did. His vocal delivery on The Boys Are Back in You're Town right. from that same album. You know, the only thing I was familiar with before we went into this. No, makes uh, makes sense, man. Uh, what did you think of this one? I liked it a mm -hmm. lot. I, th I thought it was a great sound. I thought it was definitely, as you said, different. A lot of a lot of Van. And, you know, Van Morrison, honestly, I know he's iconic. can be hit or miss for me. Yeah. But I definitely enjoyed Thin Lizzy's, uh, what their take sort of was, being influenced <laughs> No, uh, by by Van. No, for real, and uh, you know I like uh, I I like again no, different side kind of to Finn, Thin Lizzy here uh, yeah. with uh, just a three minute track, not as hard or rocking. No. as we got here, but um, but Phil can sing. So yeah, can hold man. This off, man. I, I I quite enjoyed it. I think that this is uh, about a girl, but I can see if you I think it is want too, to read but... into you know going back to to Dublin or whatever as a uh, Gerard kind of mentioned there, um, and you know it's. Not uh, like incredibly deep lyrically, but it's a, a song that you can easily grasp on to connect with and and kind of catchy. Uh, three yeah, minutes. can can feel where you know Phil's uh, coming from again. Kind of like the, we had a, a short section with the little uh, little horns just yeah. for a brief moment, and then of course the keyboards uh, going in as well. Um, <laughs> as we noted, the uh, uh, kind of a uh, controversy with that, but uh, I enjoyed it, man. I really did, and I did too. Uh, pretty catchy and. Um, and we're already now to the top five. Yeah, we are. We're up to Old Town. It's from Phil's uh, solo album in 1982. Gerard said, a Phil solo song. Phil was Thin Lizzy. Thin Lizzy was Phil. So, <laughs> you know, he just believes you can, you know, either anything goes on this mm. list. And I agree with him, you know. This song uh, comes at the beginning of his decline, just a few short years before his death. Uh, but still at the height of his powers. Imagine being a black Irish man in the 70s and 80s in Ireland. They're only about four. <laughs> and imagine being so embraced by the country, there now stands a statue in Dublin mm. of Phil, which is hugely visited from around the world. That's pretty cool. Ah. There's a festival every year in his honor, which is attended by people Ooh. from around the world. The lyrics detail the end of a romance and contains piano by Darren Wharton. Um, it was the first record to be officially played on an Irish legal independent radio. Okay. It was the first song played by Dublin's Capital Radio in July of 1989. Yeah, I just thought that was cool. That was the song they chose to play first. All right, man. Old Town coming in. I uh, I enjoyed the the video of that. You can kind of see uh, Lynette's charisma shining through in yeah. that video, man. And uh, and uh, he, whenever he was walking on the street, you know, uh, the people he he was turning heads. He was turning yeah, heads. Yeah, yeah, he was. I think it was a it was a really good job with a you know early 80s video. That's but right. Phil did a very good job of lip syncing because it always wasn't uh, wasn't there, but. Yeah, just a nice, clever little video, and I definitely enjoyed the song and the melody. Def, you yeah. know, different than 
most everything else on this uh, list so far. Pretty, pretty darn catchy, man. Pretty darn catchy. Just a nice, uh, you know, what, three minute, 20 yeah. second tune, man. So uh, I, uh, I dug that one. I dug that one. And now that's going to take us to number four on the list. We got Little Girl in Bloom from Vagabonds on the West of the Western World, rather, from 1973. Yeah, and Gerard said, from early innocent thin was he, Phil telling a somewhat ambiguous story of a woman carrying an unwanted pregnancy. Maybe it's the story of his own mother. Maybe of a young lover of his. A beautiful song mm. with an amazing jam for an outro. Ooh. Beautiful. So very early on, 73. Let's check it out. Little Girl in Bloom. Gotta add that to the favorites, man. That was one of my favorites of the night so far, man. Uh, just... Loved everything about this track, its atmosphere, the uh, the bass work, which I see, you know, Phil uh, Phil played as you know on top of the cool vocal treatments. Yeah. It was yeah. epic. What do you think of it? Yeah, Dad? same thing. And I thought the outro was fantastic, uh, just like uh, just like Gerard told us. So no, it it, exactly. And uh, diving into the lyrics, you know, um, a lot of repetition, but it, I, I did like the story it was telling. Kind of put you in the perspective of a uh, you know of a girl who's. Uh, you know, in bloom, you know, who yeah, starts each <laughs> verse off with a little girl in bloom. Um, you know, she says the child she carries in her womb, she feels something sacred. She's going to be a mammy soon. I, I like the use of the word mammy, not yeah. used in the uh, U.S. very often. Um, and then when your daddy comes home, don't tell him till uh, alone. Uh, when your daddy comes back, go tell him the facts. Just relax and see how he's going to react. So, um, again, yeah, I'm kind of getting kind of getting the vibe that, uh, you know, this is an unexpected pregnancy. Yeah. Maybe she's, you know, uh, you know, still living with her dad. So maybe she's 16, 17 years old, something along that. I don't know. But uh, all in all, man, this was just an epic tune from start to finish. And I think encapsulates a lot of what we heard from Thin Lizzy. That's been great. And uh, so good pick there, Gerard. Now we're going to go to number three, Dancing in the Moonlight from Bad Reputation in 1977. Yeah, Gerard says the smoothest bass line you will ever hear, mm. married to poetic lyrics of teenage innocence. Only Thin Lizzy could reach such a, such a trivial pop song and make it rock. Went hey. to 14 in the UK, and the saxophone's played by Super Tramp's John Hellowell. So, uh, sweet. Gonna have that sax in there, so we know you're gonna like right, that. Right, dancing in the moonlight, man. Uh, what you think of this one? Yeah, I like this nice, catchy. Um, yeah, just a nice, catchy little tune. It, you mentioned the start sounds a lot like it sounds a little Van Morrison. Yeah, exactly. And the vocal uh, treatment, man. Again, had a great just instrumentation all the way around. Yeah. That saxophone, starting with it that way. The, the bass, the the bass line, man. Um, and again, I'm uh, not only impressed with Phil's lyrics and vocals, but um, the man, his bass work has uh, been pretty darn great throughout this top ten as well. And uh, you know, the interplay with that and the saxophone in the chorus just. Uh, just gave up some good vibes, man. And I like the the track talking about uh, he's going, he's talking with his gal, man. He should have been home, but, yep. uh, um, you know, he's at the movie theaters. But, but, hey, he's dancing in the moonlight. It caught me in its spotlight on this long, hot summer night. Just kind of transport you there, thinking back to the times. Hey, man, we're out. It's 3 a.m. Should have been home by now. Disobeyed a warning, but who cares? We're out here. We're making memories, man. Uh, so really, really enjoyed that one as well. Yeah, I saw the Smashing Pumpkins did a cover of it too. I'd like to check out. Definitely. Now we're going to number two. We got Black Rose from the Black Rose, a lot, a rock legend record in 1979. Gerard said it's an epic evocation of Ireland, combining many stylistic passages of Irish traditional music with hard rock slash guitar. The songs bring together lyrics of Irish folklore of Yeats and Wild and Joyce with melodies of Irish traditional music, an epic distillation of tradition married to rock and roll. So uh, yeah, and there's supposedly four parts from my research. I so hope this right. Cool. Right. It goes Shenandoah, then Will You Go, Lassie Go, Danny Boy, and the Mason's Apron. So mm. hopefully my research is right because I haven't listened to the song. All right, we got Black Rose coming in, man. A truly epic tune. I was going to say, it is really an epic tune, mm. man. All kinds of stuff in here. And uh, just the way they were able to switch melodies, switch tempos uh, throughout the track many times, it's a... Uh, uh, it, it made the the track not seem uh, boring ever. It you know no. it's seven minutes long, but uh, you know it, uh, it it kept my attention the whole time, man. And I, I loved uh, loved some of the the lines in here. And I mean, uh, I'm sure I'd get more of them if I knew more about uh, Ireland. And yeah, whatnot, no, I was gonna but... say that. Yeah, exactly. What a context would go, but it's still fantastic stuff. And I think you know the mention that you have of, of things changing around and tempos and mm -hmm. even different vocal styles. You know, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I think 
is something you know that, that Phil shows off, but everybody shows off, and you got to be pretty much masters at your craft to be able to pull mm-hmm. this off inside of a song. So, uh, oh, and and I love the middle section, about a three minute instrumental, just letting the guitars go wild. Yeah, you could hear the Irish, mm. you know, yeah, stuff influences, in there, but. They still made it hard rocking, you know, mm. with that guitar. The guitar is always fantastic, man. And uh, I like the Oh, Tell Me, The Legends of Long Ago. And that's kind of where, uh, you know, play me the melody so I might know. And, uh, you know, he, he kind of goes through some stuff. I like the and Oscar. He's going wild. Shouting out Oscar Wilde. Yeah. We got that Georgie Knows Best. I know there's a, a famous soccer player, George Best. I, I'm assuming that's the... Um, you know, the call out there, and then, but Van is the man. You know, I, I kind of appreciated those that I could, uh, I could get, and it, it is the closer to this record. And I was gonna say, and I was just gonna point that too. It has to be right. You wouldn't want to try to follow this no, one with anything. Just absolutely epic, and I'm uh, expecting the same for our number one too. So am I. We're going uh, from Live and Dangerous, the epic uh, live record. We got Still in Love with You. Uh, originally was on Nightlife from '74. Gerard noted one of the greatest live recordings you'll ever hear. The pinnacle of what is widely considered the greatest live album of all time, combining beautiful, vulnerable singing with epic guitar playing. Um, So there's been many live versions of this tune released on various records. Uh, Moore said the song was a combo of two pieces with Phil's Still in Love With You and his I'll Help You See It Through, which he had been working on for some years. Moore left the band the following month, actually, and the song ended up being credited on Nightlife to Phil alone. Wow. And it was one of the demos that secured the group's contract with Phonogram Records in the summer of 74. Uh, by which time, as we talked about, more had been replaced by guitarists Brian Robertson and Scott Gorham. Mm. Manager Chris O'Donnell later said he lied to Phonogram <laughs> representative saying Robertson, then age 17, played the solo <laughs> instead of more. You got to do what you got to do to get him to hey. sign on that dotted line, man. No harm, no foul, right? Man, gotta, you already know, got to add the heart. Yeah, I know. I was making one last uh, note here in these songs as I try to pick mm. the three best. Uh, obviously, it goes without saying. I mean, if you if you watch this along with this, or if you're familiar with the song, the guitars are just mm. next level, man. No, shout out to Brian and, and Scott for just absolutely killing it. Uh, but a fantastic choice because yeah, I, I kept expecting them to go all in faster, but they didn't mm-hmm. need to. Like Phil's vocal performance yeah. is great, and the guitars shined without having to go yeah. you know, 100 miles an hour exactly yeah definitely a more mellow tune than i expected and i i kind of mentioned it, it this is a song that for some reason just kind of put a, a night atmosphere to me yeah. you know a little a little darker i guess maybe lyrically uh and maybe that's why it kind of and with the mellow vibe i just uh, put two and two together but i mean the first verse i think i'll fall to pieces if i don't find something else to do the sadness never ceases i'm still in love with you so again another track that i think is kind of timeless because of as long long as humans are around hearts are going to be broken man uh people are still going to be in love with people that uh, have called it off yeah and um so i just thought he delivered phil did the the emotion for this track very very um you know expertly done intermingling with that uh, very kind of bluesy at times soulful yeah. just uh emotional guitar work all throughout here so very good choice for the number one pick, which uh, will take us now to our favorite tracks. For me, it's going to be this track we just heard, Still in Love With You. I got Little Girl in Bloom, as well as Whiskey in the Jar. Um, but I, I could have chosen many tracks here. This was a very diverse list that I think gave us a, a, a great uh, you know, you know, know, teaser of what Thin Lizzy is all about. Yeah, I agree 100%. And- you know, I expected these tracks to be more hard rock, and I was mm-hmm. very impressed. Not that that's bad either, and no. some of them are that way, but uh, just very impressed with their mm-hmm. diversity. I'm kind of, I'm with you, man, on two of the three. Still in love with you, uh, the little girl in bloom, and then man, that other one you could literally pick nearly every song yeah. on here for me. But I'm gonna go because I'm an old man and I'm sentimental. I'm gonna go with Sarah. I thought that you might be yeah, going I with that, you thought man. that. I thought that. No, that's a that was a good good uh, little ballad as well, man. But uh, let us know your top ten Thin Lizzy tracks down below for sure. As always, Dad, appreciate the research. Thank you, Gerard. Happy that's birthday right, again, brother. Shout appreciate out. you bringing this to us. This man. was a this was a very fun top ten list, and uh, I, I I think people will enjoy it. I do too. And until next time, y'all. Thanks for watching. Happy listening, and we will see you.